I'm Eric Sidebottom. I'm a retired lecturer in pathology in the university and I was a medical tutor at Lincoln College also. I've got a now a, a great interest in, in medical history, particularly of Oxford, and I've written a little book on the subject. So I'd like to just tell you a little bit about some of the things that appear in, in this exhibition. And maybe the story should start with what I would regard as one of the world's most important animal experiments, which was conducted on Saturday the 25th of May in 1940 by Howard Florey, Professor Florey and Norman Heatley. And, and this shows the, the results of this study. Basically, uh, they were testing the hypothesis that this new wonder drug, penicillin, would cure infection. The conclusion of that was we've got to move on and try it in, in, in humans. And since humans are 3,000 times bigger than mice, that required a great deal of penicillin. And that is why the, this uh, wonderful ceramic bedpan uh, comes into the story. Heatley, who was the innovative guy in the team, who was always creating new ideas and testing new ideas, decided that the best um, vehicle for growing the penicillin would be a sort of bedpan. They'd, had, they'd borrowed some of the hospital bedpans earlier and found that they were quite good. So when it was decided that, uh, that essentially the laboratory had to go into production of the penicillin, uh, it was necessary to employ some extra people. And in fact, six girls who became known as the penicillin girls were employed. Uh, and I've, as I've just discovered, it, they were paid 15 shillings a week at that time. Um, and so they were responsible for the culture of the penicillin and the, uh, the care of all these bedpans. I think at peak time, it, they got up to about 800 of these bedpans for producing the penicillin. The people involved in the work were primarily, they were led by uh, Flory, the professor, the head of department. Chain was second in command, Ernst Chain was second in command. And then Heatley, um, and then a little later, Edward Abraham, who became Sir Edward Abraham. Uh, they were the chief people, but of course the technicians uh, who were growing the penicillin were very important at this stage. Uh, so, and their work was basically transferred to this uh, bedpan. Heatley came up with the design of a stackable, sterilizable ceramic bedpan. He wondered if this would be the best solution to his problem. And somebody had contact with the, uh, the potteries, with Stoke, people in Stoke-on-Trent, and they found that uh, the company called Robert McIntyre were in principle willing to have a go. So Heatley went up there in October 1940 with his design and they, they created a sort of mock-up version um, and this turned out to, it looked good, looked promising. So McIntyre's are made, I think it was 500 in the first instance of these bedpans. Uh, they were ready uh, for collection on the 23rd of December 1940. Heatley got them back, he collected them in an old van, um, got them back to Oxford on Christmas Eve 1940, filled them with the growth medium, sterilised them, came in on Christmas morning to seed them with penicillin for the first time, and then a few days later they were able to harvest the penicillin. And so that led to the first treatment of patients, which was in February 1941. So it, this, the, these bedpans enabled uh, the first trial uh, in February 1941 of humans. And of course, the first patient to be treated was Albert Alexander, the policeman here, who's now become famous. Um, poor old Albert Alexander was actually at death's door uh, when he was treated with penicillin. He had infections throughout his body. He'd had one of his eyes out. He'd got infections in his bones. He'd got abscesses in his lungs. He was very, very sick. And he was given penicillin. And from the second, third day, he began to improve. 
Very sadly, on the fifth day, uh, the team ran out of penicillin. They'd given him all the penicillin they'd got in five days. And he, though he was very much better at that time, he did actually uh, regress, fall back, and, and he died a month later because they still hadn't got enough penicillin to treat him. Thank you.